What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It's time for a review of the debut album under the name Swimmers at least, a punk rock and rock based band out of California. The album is called Drive North. I say it's their first and debut album mainly because they were formerly known as Emily's Army. Fighting for cystic fibrosis, a couple of the members of the band had a cousin that was going through some struggles, but they ended up changing the name of the band originally to Swimmers and then stylized as S W M R S because of a complication with a band of the same name overseas. And their music is mainly rooted in kind of punk rock and roll. I had a friend ask how to describe their sound because he had never listened to them before, and I said, Think Fiddler meets Green Day, but with modern production. And that was before I even knew that Zach Carper of Fiddler produced this new album, Drive North. Listening through this thing for the first time, I was kind of surprised at how much I really enjoyed it. Swimmers are composed of two primary vocalists, brothers Max and Cole, with Cole being the standout one in my opinion, just bringing a lot more presence and energy, some of the screams and yells, and just getting very charismatic as a vocalist. But Max feels a little bit more flat. In fact, he reminds me of a YouTuber that I used to watch. They were parody artists called Dave and Dave's, and Dave was the primary vocalist. I'll roll a clip here just so you can see for a side-by-side -side comparison. So I drag my girl along the way. Check out Tearberg, Schnooks, and Shop and Sing. They didn't have it. Turn the music up louder, girl. I know we only got an hour, girl. The name of the track that I just played that Max was singing on was Turn Up, which is easily one of my least favorites on the record. It's not talking about turning up like most kids would these days. It's talking about turning up the music, but there's just not much life there. There's the light guitar, but there is a track here that Max is on that I really enjoy, mainly because of the lyrical content, basically talking about, hey, don't put a knife in my daydreams. It's called Ruining My Pretending. I love the chimes that pop up there and a little bit more of a glitchy production style, and I'm seeing that incorporate into a lot of the tracks here, and I like what Zach Carper did with the production. Not to say that it doesn't still feel very raw at times, because tracks that kick this thing off, like Harry Dean, and even closing it out on the title track, Drive North, very aggressive, punk-leaning tunes, and I love that. Harry Dean obviously paying homage to the kind of charismatic character that came out of the folk world, Harry Dean himself. It was originally called by a different title, I believe, but I'm loving this track, just how it kicks things off, gets the ball rolling, and then it goes into BRB, a track that has a really, really solid chorus, and that's something that I'm seeing all throughout. Big hooks, big sound, and just impressive quality for a band so, so young. They're actually the youngest band to ever play the very well-known and respected venue, Gilman Street. I mentioned the kind of glitchy production style, something that almost feels like rock meets crossover potential. Miss Your Kiss is the biggest one that falls into this category. Could be a smash, in my opinion. They did a fantastic job of just balancing what works for this band and taking a little bit more of like a modern technique and just applying it and making a big pop song. The chorus is just so fun. I miss your kiss. I miss your lips already. I don't know. It just, it's always in the back of my head. Hannah is another one that comes to mind whenever I think of favorites. It's a tune that plays to that side of the electronics once again, and it tells the story from the girl's perspective, which is very entertaining to hear. A girl from Southern California, maybe the lyrics aren't that deep, but at the same time, the chorus just kind of loops. I like the fact that it kind of changes up as it hits each time. Weed makes me hungry, weed makes me horny. It's another thing that gets thrown in there, and I like the fact that it's just kind of laid back, a very relaxed song, but it doesn't kill the flow of the album. I'm feeling pretty torn on some of these tracks. Figuring It Out was a track that I initially thought was one of the best, but the more I listened to it, the more I found little gripes about it. It's kind of got this gang vocal thing going on in the background, and not to say that I'm opposed to that, it just doesn't sound that great for the hook of this track. It doesn't really grab me. I like the guitars on it. It's a very solid performance. There's a nice little solo that splices its way in there. And then there's a track that comes closer to the end of this thing called Uncool which they released as kind of like a B-side to their track, Miley. And that's another one that feels very, very limited and basic in terms of what it does. It's something that I've heard so many times, it just has me completely uninterested. In fact, the track that I just mentioned, Miley, is leagues above this, I feel like, in terms of what they bring to the table. I might not agree with the lyrical content here. Miley is a punk rock queen. 
I, I don't know. It just seems like she's trying to grab the spotlight and attention, but whatever, guys, that's cool if you're really dedicated to her and not just trying to get the spotlight on you because you made a song about a pop star. I have to give them kudos for the musicality of this track, though. I love the buildup in it and the kind of crunching synths that work their way in there. They just kind of explode towards the middle of the song, and I was just kind of taken back by it at first, but I think it sounds really, really cool. It's got a nice snap and a punch to it, and that's something that's lacking on a few of the other tunes, and I see this, and I see their more aggressive moments that just kind of shine in here and there and how they can balance just kind of the restraint and then the explosion, and I wish that they had done it more often. The album closes out on Silver Bullet and the title track Drive North, Silver Bullet being kind of about their place in the music industry and just guys and executives telling them that they're going to get them to this certain place, and they're talking about I don't need your keys to success, basically. I want to make it on my own. I'm going to do it myself. And then that carries over into the track Drive North, which takes more of this kind of fuck you attitude and just talks about LA and a negative connotation. And I have to say, it is damn refreshing to hear a band talk shit about LA. And I just don't see how so many bands and so many people can just give constant praise to it. It's also interesting that this song comes from a band based out of California. Oakland, yes, but at the same time, I'm sure they spend plenty of time in LA considering that's where a lot of records are produced and people are met and connections are made and so forth. I like how the track kind of winds down on these zany manipulations. It just definitely feels like a close to the album. It's a nice little close of the book, but somebody comes in and says, hey, I kind of like LA, and then they shout, fuck you. It just made me laugh so hard the first time I heard that. It came out of left field and I was like, this is fucking perfect. I'm impressed with this first album under the swimmer's name. I had never heard that much from Emily's Army. It's Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day's son on the drums, so obviously I had to check this project out. I'm glad I did, considering I enjoyed the Fiddler project that came out last year, and overall, I have to say that there's more tracks that stand out and will be added to playlists than ones that are not. Overall, I'm feeling a 4 out of 5. If you heard the album, let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to smash the like button while you're here and maybe subscribe to the channel because friends don't let friends go unsubscribed. If there's other albums you'd like to see me do, don't say Kanye Life of Pablo because obviously that's coming. I have mixed feelings. You guys will find out very soon. Other than that, I will see you guys very soon right here on ARTV.